your hands and declare it to him tonight. Sing it from the depths of your spirit. Sing it one more time. You are giving your all to him. Your life, your resources, your mind, everything that you have. few minutes to pray and cry our hearts to the Lord it's going to be a prayer of surrender you see when you come for meetings like this one of the signs that you have encountered God is that there is a part of you that surrenders to his Lordship when you encounter the Lord genuinely something must die in your life something must surrender there must be a laying off the presence of God is mighty in this place in the next two minutes i'd like you to forget about who is around you i want you to cry to the lord and say lord i come to the end of myself i surrender to your will to your strength to your power i surrender to your grace take every part of me that nothing is left and all that is left is you lift your voice and pray pneumatic I can hear you pray. Jesus said, He that loves his life will lose it. But he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. Your life, your mind, your resources, your strength, your honor all your accolades you surrender to him tonight lift your voice and cry to him this is a very very spiritual kind of prayer this is a genuine prayer every part of me dies that you will come alive in me lift your voice and cry to him Take it high for me. It all belongs to you. Oh, it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. For someone tonight, you need to lay down everything that you have, that His grace can come alive in you. For some of you, this is the secret to victory. Paul said, It is not I that live, but Christ that lives in me. Until you lay down, there is no way you can take up again. Lift your voice and cry to him. Sing that song for me. It all belongs. It all belongs. It all belongs to you. This body that you are carrying, lay down before him. This pain that you are carrying, lay down before him. Everything that buffets you, everything that seems to present you, lay before his majesty. It all belongs to Oh, 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 oh,
Shake Barate ke barato siate na barana. I lay down my pain. I lay down my pride. I lay down my body. Lay before the King of Kings. Surrender it before the throne. Shere bahate na bahara katia baraha. John said that I may decrease that he might increase in me. In Jesus name we pray John chapter 3 verse 30 he says he must increase and I must decrease the only way that God can fill you up this afternoon the only way you can carry another dimension of God the only way you can receive his grace that is needed in your life in this season that's why you came is to lay down everything you brought lay down the burden lay down the pain lay down your pride many of us are used to trusting in ourselves there are people here that this is the part of the service you came for god needs to address certain things we are going to pray that prayer again for some of you the reason why you can't receive from the lord in this season is because you are still holding on to the past there are things you are still holding on to you have not let go of for god to fill you afresh the place of the altar is the place of surrender is the place of death you die that he will come alive in you you come to release and empty yourself that he might fill you i like you to cry to god and say lord i decrease tonight that you will increase in me i empty myself that you will fill me up i want you to surrender every knowledge of god that you have had before this time and say lord i'm here for a fresh encounter Pneumatic, pray like pneumatic. I'm here for an encounter. Feel me. I'm here to be refreshed in your presence. I can't hear you pray. I can't hear you pray. I can't hear you cry to him. I decrease that he will increase in me. Outside, pray. Inside, pray. Forget about any distraction around you. And cry to him. I need you to fill me up afresh. Fill me up. Fill me up. Fill I from the top, you provide the fire. I provide the Sing it, you provide the spirit. You provide the spirit. One more time, fill me up. Fill me up. Fill me up. Fill me up. 
I empty myself before you fill me afresh. I empty myself, fill me up with your power, with your presence, with your grace. Come on, somebody who's desperate for an encounter. Cry to him this more of you in my life more love more power more of you in my life more love more power are you hungry for God tonight more of you in my life shera mate apriyata more love more power more Precious Jesus, our Savior, Holy Spirit, we wait on you, Holy Spirit, we wait on you. Fire say fire We wait on you for fire Lord we wait on you Shut 
Come on, press some more. That's why you are here. To encounter his That's why you are here. Press some more. Lord, I desire you. Fill me up afresh. Fill the hunger of my soul. in Jesus name Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2 Ezekiel chapter 2 verses 2 we're going to pray one more time before we are seated someone is getting ready for a visitation tonight the power of God is strong in this place it says then the spirit entered me when he spoke to me and set me on my feet and I heard him spoke to me this is our prayer this afternoon Lord as your word comes forth may there be a transmit transmission a transfusion of your spirit let something enter inside of me let there be a release of your power into my life a change in my understanding lift your voice and cry to me as your word comes from tonight
your wisdom your presence and most definitely your power I ask Lord that as I speak by the utterance of your spirit let there be impartations of grace let there be change of mindset let the understanding of your children be transformed let stubborn patterns and stubborn thinking patterns be destroyed let strongholds be broken off their life let the power of god be released to heal to deliver to save and to transform let there be impartations of your spirit tonight lift your hands i want to pray i see the spirit of god falling like rain like rain like rain like rain there are a number of people that god wants to visit Take that grace like rain, like the former and the latter rain. It is your season. It is your time. Experience that rain of his presence. That rain of the anointing. That rain of his glory. Let it come upon you. Let it soak you. Be drenched with that rain of his presence, of his glory, inside and outside. Fresh dew of the Spirit of God. Come breathe upon me, bread of God. Breathe upon me, Spirit of the Lord. As I lift my hands and surrender to your will, dear Lord. I'm yielding to your spirit. I am working in your Lord. Jesus, I adore. Jesus, I adore. Yes, drink from that fountain. Drink from that fountain. Drink from that fountain of the spirit. Your Emmanuel Emmanuel Sora Mahalena Mahasiana Your name is called Emmanuel and we give you glory thank you for the experience of an encounter of a lifetime blessed be your name for in Jesus precious name we pray hallelujah please take your seat in the presence of God
inside outside and following us around the world by way of the internet it's my joy to welcome us to Neoma Tech again blessed be the name of the Lord for always bringing to us the transformation that comes by the power of his word and by the spirit of God there is no way you attend these meetings again and again that your life remains the same I assure you already some of you are soaked with the presence of God right now this is why you come in the presence of God this is why you come for meetings like this so that you can be serviced by the wisdom by the presence and by the power of Jesus that is in this place and I declare to you that you will not regret coming today in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen so once more welcome us to Numatech. tonight I'm going to share something that will really bless us something very powerful and I trust that it will change our lives in Jesus name so make sure you lend me your ears please pay your undivided attention I've said it before that attention is the price that you pay in the school of wisdom attention is the price that you pay in the school of wisdom all right God is here to visit us and your action in this place will determine heaven's reaction to you everything that you do in this place will determine the response of heaven to you so when you are seated and you allow yourself to be distracted either by your phones or by the weather or by people moving up and down you are simply telling heaven that I, I I'm not serious about my life I didn't come here expecting anything that's true but when you are here you are well seated and you pay undivided attention receiving the word of God as the scripture says with meekness with humility yes you may know one or two things about God but when you come here you lay down your knowledge and you submit to the dealing of the Spirit. you are here for God to transform you and bring you into conformity to the image of his son so when you sit down paying your undivided attention receiving the word of God grace is imparted it doesn't matter whether you are seated at the overflow or you are in the hall or you are even perhaps following online make sure that your heart is open make sure that you are not distracted your destiny and your life is at stake believe me and by the time we are standing up today there will be too many changes that you will count in your life that has happened somebody who believes it shout a bigger amen, amen. i've told you that the number one factor for transformation in the kingdom is his word anywhere you go to that is missing in the unadulterated teaching of the revelation of the word of god you are in the wrong place if every other thing is present and the unadulterated teaching of the word of god is missing you are in the wrong place because there's no way god can transform you outside of his word the bible calls the word of god a seed that is planted in your heart and then when you mix that seed with faith it grows up to produce according to God's kind according to God's purpose concerning you the Bible says that we are changed from glory to glory into the same image as by the Spirit of God so what the Holy Ghost does here is as he reveals the Word of God to you he shows you the pattern from Scripture the pattern which is Jesus Christ that you must be conformed to and as you look at it it's just like looking at a mirror and then you begin to make adjustments in your life and therein lies your transformation until you begin to look like the image that the word of God has projected before you are you ready tonight so I like you to listen I tell you the truth this message changed me and it will change you in fact this is a message to the body of Christ and this is a message that even unbelievers can listen to are you hearing me there's so much of the wisdom of God wrapped into it that trust that our lives will go from glory to glory in Jesus name 
and may I announce to you inside and outside following online that whilst you are here listening to the word of God everything that is a need in your life God is bringing the answers before the end of this service in the name of Jesus Christ let me declare it again so you know I wasn't missing words everything that is a need in your life may God respond to it before this service is over in the name of Jesus Christ hear me the people listened to Jesus for three days they had need for food they were hungry to show you that they didn't waste time after the teaching of the word Jesus gave them food he gave them bread I'm saying it again while you are here listening to the word of God every need that you came with will be responded to by the Lord for somebody before this service is over you are getting ready to see answers in Jesus precious name we pray amen. amen and amen before we get into the word let me just make this announcement so I don't forget um, in two Sundays from now we are going to be having uh, a very special program we've had it two years ago we are going to have it again by the Spirit of God this is the season uh, for God to move in that direction how many of you remember seven super Sundays yes. amen we are going to have it again clap for Jesus if you're excited amen so the concept of seven super Sundays is simply a time where we feast in the light of God's Word and allow for the demonstration of the spirit and the power of God it's a time for miracles for signs and wonders and for the move of God God has brought us to that season again I like you to get ready because your life is about to change all right so from the 31st of this month which happens to be Easter Sunday we'll begin the seven super Sundays till the first Sunday of May all right so it's good yes yes amen you see how powerful you see how you know precise this thing is god god is a wise god we are beginning at easter sunday and we are wrapping it up with a miracle service meanwhile all of the seven super sundays are miracle services amen so little of the word more of the manifestations you know when we come for miracle service there's no much time for all that god wants to do sometimes when god begins to move in a dimension that's when we are closing this one there's no closing no. anywhere we stop we'll continue the next sunday somebody who is excited give the lord a big shout of praise amen so you are going to see um, the announcements online as we prepare for that make sure you invite as many as possible it's going to be a move of god like never before amen and amen and then in the month of april the lord has instructed me well you know it's very easy to know when god is speaking he will just tell you things that are humanly impossible or he will tell you things that you yourself will not agree to okay i think i've i've noticed that now once you hear something that everything in you is fighting with it's an indication that god is the one who spoke all right because he needs you to believe him and receive the grace to bring the performance of what you have heard so in the month of april god is doing something very mighty in our lives um, i sense a baptism of the favor of god for us in the month of april and because of that we are going to be having party nights of supernatural favor yes so this is going to be an online prayer meeting party nights from 1st of april to 30th of april every night from 12 to 1 it's going to be a reign of supernatural favor give the lord a big hand of praise <laughs> amen you know god is awesome um believe me if there's one grace i know is favor amen 
I know it. I know it. There was a season in my life where the Lord instructed me to spend the whole month praying for favor. I think it was the month of my birthday. So it was 28 days. And you know which month has 28 days. And I tell you the truth, when the grace came, I knew it had come. Amen. How many of you are getting ready in that month to see surprises, miracles that you didn't budget for? Now give the Lord a big clap of praise. Amen. So it's going to be online, so you will stream it live. You'll be at the comfort of your homes. We'll pray 12 to 1 for just 30 nights. We're not adding to it. We will not subtract from it. I want you to believe God for the impossible. Are you hearing me? You will see testimonies before the moon ends. You will hear strange testimonies, not just amongst us here, but around the world. Are you hearing me? So I want you to wake up your prayer gears and get ready. It's going to be an awesome moment um, in the presence of the Lord. Are you set for tonight? I want to teach on what I title Be Ye Transformed. Be Ye Transformed. Be Ye Transformed. Romans 12 verses 2. Romans 12 verses 2. It says, And do not be conformed to, the, to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Give us in King James translation and then in amplified and i think also in the message so we can understand 12 verse 2 and be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of god it says do not be conformed to this world this age fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs that's amplified for you but be transformed changed by the entire renewal of your mind by its new ideals and its new attitude so that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of god even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you let's go to message Let's go to New Living Translation. So I want to explain this scripture so we can properly understand. It says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect you will learn to know god's will for you which is good and pleasing and perfect so uh, uh transformation the goal of transformation is that you come into the understanding of god's will concerning you and this understanding exists in different levels all right can i have the message again there's something i need to get same verse the message he says don't become so well adjusted to your culture i think i should read that again for a margi man that is here no offense to margi people i'm just joking no we're africans now uh -huh. when you reach for food we'll drop christianity and then pick up amen so if you are that kind of a christian listen to this it says don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking say instead open your ears oh don't close your ears now some of you have just you have blocked your ears now you don't want to hear this one they say instead fix your attention on god and then you will be changed from the inside out 
read re, huh yes readily recognized i can't the screen is uh it's too short the fonts are too short on the screen readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it unlike the culture around you always dragging you down to its level of immaturity god brings the best out of you develops well-formed maturity in you so you see the reason why god wants you to be transformed is so that you will be able to recognize his will in any matter and quickly respond to it you see quick response obedience is one of the signs of a believer where you find a believer who is growing steadily and steadfastly in the knowledge of god one of the things you'll find in their life is a quick response to the voice of god a quick response prompt actions taken in line with the understanding that they have of the will of god that's a sign that that man knows god that's a sign that he's a believer and the bible says god wants us to be transformed and the transformation is through the process of the renewal of our mind that your mind will experience renewal now let me try to define for us what renewal is the word renewal is also from the word renew it means number one to make like new the word renew means number one to make like new or to restore to freshness vigor or perfection so when something is renewed it is restored to perfection to a state of perfection it is restored to a state of freshness the word renew also means to make extensive changes to make extensive something has been existing in a state before now but then you revisit it and begin to change certain aspects of it because you want to give it another look that also means to rebuild so sometimes somebody can convert a single story building and make it a two story building is that true uh-huh so the word renew also means to make new spiritually to make new spiritually now when we say to make new spiritually we are talking about regeneration regeneration to regenerate the way you make a thing new spiritually is to regenerate it you know regenerate or regime all right the word gene yes is the unit of the life of every individual organism your gene is what determines who you are your gene contains your dna which has in it encoded in it every character characteristic feature of that person so when we say regeneration or regene it means to change the gene so there is a gene in a man that makes him dark in complexion and when we say that man has experienced regeneration it means you totally change the genetic structure of that man in such a way that he no longer has a dark pigment on his skin do you understand that so when the bible says or when we say to make new spiritually is to renew we it's talking about what happened to you at salvation that you are regenerated there was a change that happened inside of you there was something of god that was placed in you so you can carry the nature of god live and function in his likeness the bible says that you are not conformed to the pattern of his word but that you are transformed by the renewal by the regeneration of your mind the word regenerate means number one to form or to create again to form or to create again number two it means spiritual or to, to be spiritually reborn or converted to be spiritually reborn or converted remember when jesus told nicodemus in john chapter 3 verse 3 except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god 
Hmm? So what gives him the ability to see? To see the kingdom? Or what awakens his spiritual senses? Is that he has experienced some form of conversion inside of him. The word regenerate number three means radical change for the better. I like that word radical. Radical change. An intense spiritual and mental change. Intense spiritual and mental transformation. Radically. That you shift in your understanding. That the way you used to believe has changed. That the ideas that you held on to, your belief system is altered completely. Yes. For instance, when a man who is a very cultural individual is not born again, probably in his tribe or his, uh, his culture, they believe in masquerade. Anytime you say masquerade, you have seen the gods of the land. You bow down before them. But when this man becomes born again and brought into the kingdom, if he does not experience genuine spiritual and mental change or transformation radically in such a way that that belief system is tampered with even as a believer he will still see masquerades and bow in fact some of them will still travel you know most churches do thanksgiving at the end of the year is that true they will come and submit their yam and papa because that's what we know how to give during thanksgiving yam and papa cut the banana leaf like that and bring it to God. That's God. All the blessings from January to December is purple and plantain that you brought to God. You see, that man has not been changed. He has not been transformed. If we, in fact, let me let me even enter there because I'm coming back later. You see, the way people give in the house of God will tell you whether they are they have really experienced transformation or not. When somebody feels that it's too big to give God a hundred dollars, he has not something has not happened to his mental faculties. There is a knowledge of God he has not experienced. So he still sees God the way he was seeing God when he was not born again. That God is like his ancestors that you cut yam and throw to them on the ground. That's why now that he's born again, he's not giving yam, but what he's giving is tier tier 20 naira. He said the same thing now. What's wrong? You want to stop me? Hold on. I've not started. Where was I before I entered here? Huh? Okay, you, know, you, want, you prayed for me to forget so that... Alright, when I remember. So a radical change. So if this man has not experienced a radical change and transformation in his mind to understand that God is the only true God and every other God are but the works of men. Masquerades are people who want them to deceive other people. You say, but Apostle, do you know the masquerade in my village? If they flog you, you'll be sick. You see, let me tell you the truth. The Bible says the just shall live by his faith. Every man exists based on their belief system. There is an ideology I've held on to for many years that believes that the strokes of the cane of a masquerade will make you sick. And definitely when it comes on you, you'll become sick. So after Thanksgiving, he brings his plantain and purple. He will travel for December and go to the village. Guess what he's going to do? He's going for another masquerade festival. And when they finish, on 31st night, they'll smuggle into church and say, God, forgive me. And then come back and carry their deaconship title. When you see that kind of practice, it just shows you that man is only born again, but he has not experienced the benefits that comes with being born again which is genuine spiritual and mental transformation a radical change that shifts your mind and how you see things please be seated number four the word regenerate means to restore to a better or a higher or more worthy state to restore to a better, higher, or more worthy state. 
So when a man has been transformed, renewed, or regenerated in his mind, he has been restored to a better level of thinking, a higher dimension of thinking, a more worthy state. Something changes in his mind that affects his entire state of living. The Bible says, be not conformed to the patterns of this world. Hmm? Go back to that scripture again. Romans 12 verse 2. Please be fast so that we can save time. I'm beating against time. And do not be conformed to this world. Do you have it in NIV? Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. Now that he's introducing the word pattern. It's talking about a sequence or a model of thinking. All right? Every aspect of human existence in the world system has a pattern. For instance, one of the patterns of the world system for marriage especially in Africa is that you must throw a big reception I beg where is the word reception in the Bible so the only land that the guy bought that he should have saved money to build house he will sell that land just because he wants to have a lavish reception and you know who does is Christians. In fact, the people from the other side copied from us. They saw how buoyant and extravagant we were with celebrating weddings. And it's okay to celebrate weddings. But the Bible says that we should be temperate in all things. But the guy does not mind or the family does not mind. If you hear things in families like, Hey, are you not the firstborn? You, you want them to, do you want us to be put to shame? They will say we don't have money and all of that. Have you heard that? That's the pattern that the world has is trying to force on us. Another pattern. I'm careful so that somebody will not stand up and stone me. <laughs> careful of what I will pick. And the Holy Ghost is opening my eyes now to pick a lot of things. Huh? Those days when you uh, when you are to get married the best thing is maybe the introduction at the traditional level uh, which some cultures call the traditional marriage and then after that you know they go to church and that's it now there is engagement self engagement engagement yes engagement it must go to today's and kneel down with ring like this and they must capture it and put it on social media then after that you think you are over you think everything is over they will still have bridal shower and bachelor's eve many years ago i traveled for a wedding of a respectable minister in this country his daughter was wedding and the hotel where I stayed, I stayed among bigger men of God. So they didn't allow me to sleep on the bed. They, were, they occupied the whole place. So I had to sleep on the ground. But because of that, you can't sleep for long. So I stood up and went outside around 1 and I was spring. By 2 a.m., I saw some people at the gate knocking and disturbing the security man. When they opened, it was the children of those pastors I was sleeping with. All of them skimpily dressed. They were just coming back from. They say B E. That's how they mentioned it. I didn't know I was a Jew guy. It was later. It was the next day. I knew that okay, B E is bachelor's eve. So they finished the bridal shower. The whatever. Then the wedding. Then after the wedding, when the woman gets pregnant, there's now what they call baby bump. Eh? How come you know it and you are planning to do it? You are planning, you have already. Ah. 
Some of you already, some ladies already have the dress they wear. This is the dress they, they saved it online. You are you are even ordering it now. Now that is the pattern of the world. Are you hearing me? Go back to that scripture, Romans 12, verse 2, NIV. These are the patterns. This is how they do things. And they will force you to conform to it. But the Bible says, do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world. It says, but be transformed. That as a believer, you step out of what is done. And say, wait a minute. Let me probe these things through the lens of scripture. You know, so, you know what somebody just said in their mind? Say, Apostle, wait, make I do and first. Then when I do and finish, I will probe. Is that true? Let's finish the scripture, please. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. You know what this scripture means? It's not really saying that there is something called the good will of God, the acceptable will of God, the perfect. There's nothing like that. The will of God is the will of God. You know what it means? What it means is that because you are being transformed, because your mind is experiencing a change by the Spirit of God, you are growing day by day, step by step, layer by layer, in your conforming to God's will. That's why it says good, acceptable. So there is a level of your conformity and obedience to the will of God that the Bible calls good. But you can graduate from there to better, which is acceptable. And then you graduate from there to perfection. This is a man that has understood God's will and perspective over issues and is ready to conform to it without compromise. That's what the Bible means by the perfect will of God. There's nothing like the good, acceptable, and nothing like that. Don't even try preaching any sermon around it because you will not find any scripture to support it and make it a doctrine are you hearing me it's either you are doing what God said or not you know that's why we dug out what we call permissive will there's nothing like that please you read your bible very well don't just swallow what you hear hook line and sinker even me that is talking to you go and prove what I'm saying It just is just talking about your levels of conformity and this happens as you are gradually transformed that you will be so changed in your mindset a time will come where you will become like Moses God didn't need to speak to the children of Israel he only spoke to Moses Moses was the one that will write the law and give to them or you become like Enoch so transformed in your mind that you know God to a point where you have been brought to that state of perfection as Christ has made you to be in the spirit at that point you can't stay on earth again this is why we must be transformed tell your neighbor be ye transformed let me tell you three things please be seated number one listen to this we have been saved we are being saved and we will be saved we have been saved from the penalty of sin we are being saved from the presence of sin from the practice i mean of sin and then number three we will be saved from the presence of sin Apostle, what are you talking about? Are there scriptures to support it? Yes. Romans 3 verse 23 to 24. For all are sin and come short of the glory of God. Then verse 24 says, Being freely justified by grace, by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. By this scripture, we understand that we have been saved from the penalty of sin. All have sinned. Yes. But the Bible says we have been freely justified by his grace true redemption redemption there speaks of the forgiveness of sin that because of what jesus did on the cross you have been saved from the he paid the penalty of sin the price of sin has been paid 
so even when you sin you will not be killed by god as a believer because jesus had paid the price for sin you are no longer supposed to suffer the penalty of sin this happens at instant at the instant of your salvation this is what we call instant salvation when you become born again this is a reality however i said we are being saved from the practice of sin yes the penalty of sin has been dealt with but you still find yourself falling back and forth into the practice of sin it doesn't make you a sinner all right but the reason why that is happening is because though your spirit has been renewed in christ jesus your mind and your body is still in the world your mind did not change instantly when you were saved in fact, I know a man of God who told me that the day he was baptized, that day when he went back home, he fought serious fight. And it's not his fault. That mind for many years has been used to the practice of sin. Don't expect that it will change at once. That's why you have to be patient with people. When you see people falling and rising again, you will need patience to hold their hand to help them be discipled. To a point where they are able to conquer sin judgmental people are not patient actually so we are being saved at this at this junction of your salvation i call it progressive salvation that as your mind is renewed by the word of god you begin to understand the ways of god to know that okay this is sin this is not what god wants this is what god wants and conform to what he wants and then lastly i said we will be saved from the presence of sin the presence of sin because as long as you are putting on this flesh you are susceptible to sin your spirit is conscious of god your mind sometimes want to do the will of god but this body this body that's why when you the day you decided to fast the body now reminded you that you kept fresh you do you know fresh you You kept it last week in the fridge and it has not expired. Though. Or the expiry date is next month. So drink it now before it expires. It's on the day that you are fasting. Is that true? Uh -huh. Because the body is filled with all kinds of appetite that makes it a slave to the world. And the body wants, to, the, wants the appetite to be exercised. So when you come around a lady as a young man, a beautiful lady, something is triggered inside of you, isn't it? Aha, it's the body telling you, oh boy. So as long as we remain in this body, we are still within the presence of sin. Now that is not a license to practice sin. Are you hearing me? Because the Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. The fact that your body is suggesting to you, a suggestion is a suggestion, it's not a command. It's you that think the body is commanding you, and that's why you have been a slave to it. Your body will tell you, if you don't eat now, hunger will kill you. Let me ask you, all the times you starved and you were hungry, did you die? That was just a feeling, it was not a reality. So the next time you want to seek the face of God and go on a fasting spree, when your stomach make noise, tell yourself it's a feeling. It's not a reality. Feelings can change. Eh? Bind yourself and enter that fasting. Press into God now. Are you hearing me? You don't eat chicken when your mates are touching God. Because by the time you... <laughs> Press into God now that you are young so that when you are old, you will have a legacy to leave behind how many of you want to get to heaven and when the saints are speaking of the mighty things they did for god on earth you will just sit down quiet because you didn't do anything you kept living from prophet to prophet from father to father uh, father to father when moses is talking about how he divided the red sea you just sit down like that amen so we'll be saved from the presence of sin that is called total salvation that's what paul said in first corinthians 15 that this mortality will put on immortality and the corruption will put on incorruptible in other words those who died in christ 
their bodies will be exchanged for a glorious body that does not contain sin imagine living in a body that does not sin because the wages of sin is death sickness and all these things came as a result of sin so imagine when you live with a body that does not sin life somebody say amen number two when God transforms you by changing your paradigms and thoughts sorry when God transforms you by changing your paradigms and thought patterns let me take it again God transforms you by changing your paradigms and thought patterns till you can't be physically traced to any ethnocultural or sociological background I'll take it again for those of you that are writing God transforms you by changing your paradigms the word paradigm is the word P is spelled P-A-R-A D-I-G-M paradigms and thought patterns paradigms and thought patterns till you can't be physically traced till you can't be physically traced to any ethnocultural to any ethnocultural or sociological background God transforms you by changing your paradigms and thought patterns till you can't be physically traced to any ethnocultural or sociological background for those of you who didn't get it please you can listen to the sermon again all right so when God transforms you he does it in such a way that nobody can look at you and trace you to a particular tribe and trace you to a particular nation or culture when you see a Yoruba man for instance a typical Yoruba man there are things you will see on the surface to tell you this one is Yoruba is that true I won't mention it you know it in your mind so that they won't put me in trouble when you see an Igbo man anywhere there are things you will see fish superficially and you know this is an Igbo guy when you see a Margi man if that man has not been transformed genuinely if he's a typical Margi man you can't spend 15 minutes with them without observing ego it's true yes don't stone me it's the truth because we came here to be delivered from it it's true i love you please so seed in my life but i'm telling you the truth it's just the truth we pride in so many things but you see him he doesn't have much money but he doesn't mind buying a car so that he can show off it's the same with canary people isn't it good and i love that i'm just telling you this is typical culture now god when he transforms a man you will not be able to guess if this man is margi or yoruba because you will not see the culture play out through his actions through his speech what you will see is the life of christ ladies let me tell you something gone are the days where they will advise you don't marry from this tribal this tribe they're like this don't marry from let me just tell you the truth now marry a man that is transformed let me just tell you because that tribe that they are telling you to marry from you have not seen an unbeliever from there i'm telling you if you see him you know that statement that says to uh, till death do us part you will start praying it from when you get married have you not seen people who are praying for their spouse to die there are pastors who go on the mountain praying that their wives will die because they advise them if you marry from this tribe she will give you peace unknown to them it's not it's not about tribe the bible says he has called us out of every tribe and nation and kindred and tongue and has made us priests and kings that will rule and reign on the earth transformation cannot be traced to any cultural background all that you will see is christ the bible says in, Col in colossians chapter 3 verse 11 it says for in christ jesus there is neither barbarian or Scythian, there is neither jew nor gentile male nor female but christ is all in all let me tell you the truth forget about tribe 
marry a man or a woman who is transformed. Yes, I know that when you are going for introduction, you will pay with your nose, but no problem. After that one, it's your marriage. Are you hearing me? Because we have allowed our, respectfully speaking, our parents are very wonderful people. They loved God so dearly, but I want you to know that their knowledge of God was limited to the information that they were able to get. The revelation of God that was dispensed during their time is what captures the boundaries of their knowledge of God. That's the reason why you still see them hold on to tribalism. It's not their fault. It is the knowledge of God that they have. It is limited. For us now, God has supplied greater level of, of light and insight. And you know that in Christ Jesus, there is nothing about tribe. I hope I'm not offending somebody. It's just the truth. Because there are people, there are Christians suffering now. Even amongst us, there are people crying in their marriage. Why? Because they married tribe. So you start dating a young man and then because of an ideology that has been sold to you from your house by your parents for many years, that Kanuri people are wicked. And even though this guy is born again and genuinely loves God and is being transformed, the day you just say you are Kaniru, you say, Kai, I'm gone. It's not the will of God. How did you know the will of God? So when God transforms you, it takes away the prejudice of ethnicity, culture, language barrier, nationality. He takes it away. In heaven, there will be nothing like that. Believe me. There will be nothing like that in heaven. So it's high time we, 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 we peel off this tribalistic mindset that has caused a lot of dissent. In fact, the problem in Nigeria today is because of tribalism. Let me be honest to you. The reason why we have that concept of national cake is tribalism. Yes or yes? So when this one from the West now became a president, he now brought number three. People are very intelligent. So you want to always continue what I said. Are you getting blessed? I can't hear you. Are you getting blessed? Number three. Our transformation in Christ is fostered by the Holy Spirit. Our transformation in Christ is fostered by the Holy Spirit through the following. Number one, intimacy with the person of Christ. And number two, conformity to the principles and character of Christ. Intimacy with the person of Christ, conformity to the principles and character of Christ. Our transformation in Christ Jesus is fostered by the Holy Spirit through these two things. That you will get to know the person of Jesus. And then you also learn to conform to his ways. His patterns. His lifestyle. It is a combination of your knowledge of the person and the principles of Jesus Christ that determines your transformation. So that's what the Holy Ghost does through the word. He reveals to you the person and the principles of Jesus Christ. This is how you are transformed. Write this down. The journey to genuine transformation. Let me share four facts with you. On the journey to genuine transformation. The journey to genuine transformation transformation number one your thoughts are the bedrock of your destiny your thoughts are the bedrock of your destiny your thoughts are the bedrock of your destiny hear this your thoughts will give back to speech your speech will give back to your actions your actions will produce habits your habits will give back to character and it is your character that determines your destiny. This is the chain. Your thoughts 
will determine what you say. What you say will give birth to your actions. Your actions repeatedly will become a habit. Your habit will form a character. And it's your character that determines your destiny. So your destiny is shaped by what? Your thoughts. Everything starts from the realm of your thoughts. Any change that must happen to a man must happen from that place. Anything that must appear in the destiny of a man must first of all be a reality from his thoughts. Proverbs 23 verse 7 says, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Not so he is going to be. You are, you're, you are not where you are not going to where your mind is. You are where your mind is. The reason why you tried and it failed was because in your mind before trying, you saw it that it failed. No, tell yourself the truth. Have you heard people who say, what if it no work? That's it. They already have a thought pattern that it will not work. And can I, can I shock you? Even when you call the name of the person success, if there is no attitude adjustment, the person will leave the exact opposite of that name. I didn't call it. You can call it yourself. Huh? Have you not seen a, a, an armed robber with the name Christian? From birth, the mother called him Christian. Called him Zacharias. Or let me, which, which virtuous woman do you have in the Bible now? Sarah, Deborah. But now she's a high class prostitute. See, you can change the name, but if you don't change the thoughts, it's not about name. Those things don't work again. It's still good to name, all right? But from that name, begin to do something about the thoughts of that individual. That's why you see, from age one to age seven, at the cradle of the formative stages of a human being age one to age seven they learn by what they see they practice is what they see that they will do that's why the bible says train up a child in a way let me explain it to you bishop come just hold me for now for now just hold me pastor henry please come hold him at the same place this one is not behold no no at his back it's not behold below the belt look at this a train is made up of different coaches and compartments. Is that true? The Bible says, train up a child, follow me, in the way he should go. Are we walking on a straight line? So that when he's old, he will not... The reason why they can't turn is because they are connected to a carriage that is on a straight line. This is what the meaning of that scripture is. Go and sit down. Thank you, sir. So if from age one to age seven, you call that child success and you've not begun to teach them the principles of success that it becomes a mindset forget it forget it when the child now becomes 21 you keep going from prayer house to prayer house for deliverance most times the deliverance we are looking for is just simply attitudinal adjustment Proverbs 4 23 it says keep your heart with all diligence the word heart there is the word mind he said, for out of it flows the issues. The word issues there is the word boundaries. It's, it uses the analogy of a river that is flowing. Okay? A body of river that flows has boundaries. Isn't it? They call it the river bank. So when he says out of it flows the issues of life, he's saying the boundaries of your life, the things you will do and you will not do, is based on the information that sits in your thought pattern and what did Jesus say in Matthew 12 verse 34 to 35 please be very fast I'm out of time I want us to save time he said brood of vipers how can you be in evil speak good things for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth you now believe when I say your thoughts will give birth to your speech number two Changes in life are determined by mind shifts. Changes in life are determined by mind shifts. 
changes in life are determined by mind shifts what is a mind shift a mind shift is simply number one changing your mind about something that's what a mind shift is changing your mind about something that means repentance to repent means to change your mind it's from the greek word metanoa it means to change your mind number two mind shift means investigating and adjusting your assumptions beliefs and ways of thinking investigating and adjusting your assumptions your beliefs and your ways of thinking changes in life are determined by mind shifts so when a man changes his mind on something you'll find the expression of that change in his life when your ideology is corrected when you change in your assumption your belief system about life or about a thing will find that change literally expressed in your attitude towards that thing second corinthians 10 verse 3 to 5 it says though we walk in the flesh we do not walk after the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through god to the bullying down of strongholds casting down imaginations imaginations visual impressions you need to bring it down and take down every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god it's a bringing every thought into captivity so for you to change a thought you must capture that thought and then you must conform it to the image of christ which is revealed through his word for instance what would jesus say about this that becomes your new opinion so changes in life are determined by mind shift so if somebody believes that any time cockroach pass which is our prating you just get ready even in a plane going to dubai and you will say it's their village people it's not village people sometimes the village people there is our mindset he already has a thinking pattern that anytime you see cockroach a witch is coming for some is ant for some is cat your own is what There are people who believe that any woman that doesn't tie her head will not go to heaven. Is that true? Uh -huh. Wait till you get to heaven and see people without hair tie. I'm sure you will try to advise Jesus that. No, you know, in the scriptures, you know there are people like that. If they have their way, they'll advise Jesus. There are people who believe that if a lady wear trousers, ah, it's of the world. You need a mind shift. Tell your neighbor you need a mind shift. Can I explain something to you? In Genesis chapter 6, when you read from verse 1 to verse 8, are you getting blessed at all? Yes, sir. I'm back. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. In Genesis chapter 6 from verse 1 to 8, the Bible tells us that men began to multiply, just be flashing the verses one after the other. Men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them and because of that fallen angels went to sleep with these daughters and they produced a strange species of human beings and this god god offended in verse 3 the bible says that god himself said my spirit will not strive with man forever in other words i will not keep putting up with all of this nonsense that men are doing forever he said, yet his days shall be 120 years. Now let me give you, let me do a mind shift for you. Many of you read that scripture and believe that what God said was that man cannot live more than 120 years. It's wrong. I know you love Jesus. I know you are sincere, but you are wrong. Hear this. What he meant there was that between that time God made that statement, to the flood that destroyed all life it was not god was not going to give a period of grace more than 120 years 
remember go back to that verse he said my spirit will no longer strive with man in other words even when man was sinning and misbehaving the grace of god could put up with man for a while hoping that man will repent but when god saw that man is just bent on evil and his flesh there's nothing you can do about his nature he is conformed to sin god said the grace period now from now till the flood will come to destroy will no longer be more than 120 years because there were many people who lived more than 120 years noah lived 950 years after the flood terror who was who, whose life was laced with all kinds of delay and patterns lived 205 years even lived more than abraham abraham lived 175 years isaac lived 180 years Jacob lived 147 years. So if you think that that scripture was saying that man will not live 120 years, why do we have people living more than that after the flood? What he was saying was from that time God made that statement to the flood that came in the next chapter, the time for the grace for man to repent and return to God will not be more than 120 years. Somebody say mind shift. Because if you, let me tell you what believing it the wrong way will do to you. You will never think it is possible to live more than 120. Another place, I think it was David, was it David? Okay, Moses who said in Psalms 90 that the years of man are 70, at most 80. So many people, many Christians have read that scripture without perfect understanding. And they have this belief system that man cannot live more than 80 years so they are in their mind now they are struggling to just get to 80. how old is baba deboye how old is dr kumui and they are still preaching maurice serulo died 90 something you see what wrong believing can do until the holy spirit gives you a mind shift huh it is your belief system that will be your limitation There are people here who never believe that they will become millionaires. No, it's a mindset actually. They can't even see the possibility of six zeros in their account. So there's nothing you will do even if they work in civil service for 35 years. Even if they take loan. Something is dysfunctional in their mind that limits their results. And until they experience a mind shift even God cannot cause a change. I hope you are being challenged because when we get up to pray this night, we are going to pray against wrong mindsets that have held us. Some things must fall off this night. Me? No. It's in fact, I don't even believe in poverty again. No, it's true. I don't believe in poverty. I believe in wealth, oh. I believe in opulential wealth. Are you hearing me? Ah, I believe in prosperity. Like my second name. I know it. I believe that you can be rich and be righteous. I believe that it's easier for a poor man to go to hell. Wait. Jesus didn't say... <laughs> no, let me leave it there. <laughs> let me leave it there. Number three, people's opinion about life are based on their perspective. People's opinions about life are based on their perspectives. What is perspective? Our perspectives or views to life. Our perspective is our view to life. Your view about something. Your view about life. Your view about reality. Our perspectives are informed by our present orientation concerning it. Your view about life is based on your present orientation. How much information base you have about life. If you believe that in this life you will only suffer and rest is only when you get to the grave believe me 
that is exactly what you will see even if your name is christian even if your name is victory even if your name is what enjoyment no you see all kinds of names you already have a pers a view of life i told you a story a while ago i said six blind men went to see an elephant and when they got there remember i said six blind good when they got there the first one touched the elephant by the side and you know the elephant is large by the side he said the elephant is like a wall that was his perspective the second one touched the elephant by the tusk those sharp things in front he said the elephant is like a spear how can an elephant look like a spear the third one touched the tail he said the elephant is like a rope the fourth one touched the trunk he said the elephant is like a snake the fifth one touched the ear he said, ah, the elephant is as large as a fan a fan the sixth one touched the legs of the elephant he said Kai, the elephant is as strong as a tree and guess what the six of them began to argue everybody claimed that his own view was the view instead of them to bring their perspectives together and they went home confused and discouraged of course so your perspective about life is based on the information that you have your orientation the information that comes to you is what determines your orientation about the thing you know when you get into a university or an institution of learning uh, one of the things that they will do for you the first month is that they will do what they call orientation take you around the school tell you about the school the institution the faculties and the departments and everything you need to know to be aware about the institution without that orientation there are places you may never go to that should benefit you is that true for instance if you enter a place okay i heard this story that a man entered a ship and was traveling from one country to the other and before he entered the ship he bought a packet of biscuit maybe cabin biscuit or something because he didn't have money to buy food so every time it was meal time everybody would rush to the dining or the galley as it is called in a ship and he would go and hide somewhere and eat a little from his packet of biscuit and save the less for later and then when they were just a day or probably a few hours to their destination somebody who had noticed him for days came to him and said i, I noticed that you don't go to the dining to eat when it is meal time he said yes because i don't have money the man said, no, you don't need money. Do you still have the ticket that was given to you when you boarded this ship? He said, yes. He said, on that ticket, all the meals that you will eat was paid for with that ticket. And meal time was already over. Do you know that some of you are like that? If God does not help you, you are like that. All that God has paid for for you to enjoy in salvation. Look at you now. You are not even enjoying one third or one fourth of it. Because you are ignorant. It is your orientation that determines your perspective of life. There are people who believe that in this life you will suffer. And that's why you see that family, generation after generation, they keep suffering and their only reasonable prayer is destiny help us. There are people who believe that God has so prospered them that they create family foundation so that generation after generation they will help the less privileged. It's a mindset is a mindset there is he that scatters and yet gathers there is he that withholds more than it is due make i keep this one though this does cost now man just skip this one and he ends up in poverty that's the perspective about life tonight god wants to change our perspective about things there are guys who fair ladies have broken your heart so much that you, your perspective to life is that any lady that is fair is an Obanji. You are sent from hell to break people's hearts. The moment they see their friend with a fair lady, they, they, they've already put anointing oil in their pocket. Their hands are there to, ready to spray. Do 
There are people who believe that if you don't marry from Calabar, your wife will not be able to cook. <laughs> you have not seen spoiled Calabar brat that does not even know how to hold the pot. Perspective. Where you are now is based on your orientation. There are people who believe anytime they see a world gay come in their house, they don't come. They don't come. Then they start singing the song. Wherever witches we gather, Holy Ghost fire. How come you not to sing that song? You have something's wrong with your perspective. And it's not their fault. There is, there are, there is an information base they are operating with. There are people who are seated outside now who believe that except they are seated in the hall, they cannot be blessed in any service. So if they come and meet themselves at the overflow, they go back. It's your perspective. The Bible says the same Lord, Romans 10, 13, over all is rich unto all that call upon his name. Don't you know that God is present everywhere? Are you getting blessed? Perspective. There are people who believe that if somebody dies and you don't come to greet them, or if they are doing like you did your child dedication today, if you didn't come, you don't like them. And that's how they create all kinds of dissensions and lose destiny relationships that God has. Who told you that who told you that just because somebody came for your occasion, it means they love you? Have you not seen people who go with witchcraft? It's your perspective. There are people God placed in your life. They don't need to be there in the occasion. I had the story of a young man who was planning for his wedding and one of his uncles who lived abroad hoped to make it for the wedding. And then a few a week to the wedding, he couldn't come. He called the young man. He said, I've sent something to your account. I'm sorry, I will not be able to come. This and this and that and that. The young man said, thank you, uncle, but you have come already. Because of what you sent in the account. When some alerts are more visible than the presence of some people. Now, I'm not insinuating. Are, are you hearing me? Say, so, apostle, say some alerts. So, and hey, more, give something. Now, made an, uh, that's another perspective, too. Let me, do you really understand what destiny helpers are? They are in different categories. There are some who don't have anything. What they have is connection. They have influence to connect you with one person that can change your life. There are some who don't care about anybody, but they have substance. What's your business plan? How much is it? And that's the end of the story. There are some who don't have money. They don't have connection, but they have skill. God sent them to drive your vision. Those of you who are in ministry, pray for those people who, any kind of ministry, pray for them. Even if you are a music minister, you don't have time always to be going on your phone, checking all your social. If you do that one, you will fade out very soon. You need to be in the presence of God downloading songs. So you need somebody who is skillful with the internet, with media and IT. His job is, you just bring the content. We'll know how to arrange them. So you see these media guys now, you see them with camera systems and everything. I'm here preaching. They are doing the greater preaching with what they are doing. And then there are some who don't even have skill. They don't have money. They don't have anything. But they will stand with you when you are crying. You don't know that they are important till the day you cry. The Bible says, woe to that man who is alone. Even rich men are lonely. Can I tell you something? Uh, that means if you can develop a listening ear, you may not have anything, but you are someone that can listen and you can keep people company. God may just prepare a billionaire who will make you his friend. Amen. That's a good place to shout amen. That's true. Amen. That's very true. I mean, go, go some CEOs, go into their office. See of a multinational company. You see him playing with his grandson. Oh God, what are you doing with the grandson? He's telling you that he's lonely. As far as he's concerned, that grandson is a destiny helper. 
you see some some wealthy ceos in their office they have a golf course they'll just stand there and be playing golf is it that they don't have work so people's opinions about life are based on their perspective and then number four what informs you is what determines your form what informs you is what determines your form in other words your information determines your formation very true i drew a diagram here i wish i could uh, pre, pre, uh, you know uh project it to you but i will just try to do it this way your soul is made up of three components your soul is made up of three components your soul is the organ of interaction in your being you know as a believer you are spirit soul and body all right your spirit is the life of your being your body is the vessel that carries your being your soul is the organ that interacts with your environment that interacts with your being it is your soul that connects your spirit and your body your soul has three components your mind your emotions which is your feelings and your will which is your judgment your mind is made up of two your thoughts which are your reasoning and your imaginations so information that comes from your external environment gets into your thoughts first which is one of the components of your mind it is in your thoughts that you reason that's why you process every information that comes around you is that true good and there are some people who are highly analytical it means that they are subjected more to the opinion of their reasoning it is when that information enters your reasoning or your thoughts that it now produces a picture which is in your imagination registered in your imagination it is that picture that will determine how you feel that picture that vision will determine the state of your emotion so if a man hears the word cockroach his reasoning picks up that word and produces an image of a cockroach in his mind and then you see the man jump immediately for instance say, see cockroach that hey what has happened is his thoughts created a visual impression in his mind in his imagination and that affected how he felt that okay for me oh, cockroach is a wild animal or cockroach is an object of witchcraft so i have to jump and then it is your emotions that determine your judgment so your mind will determine how you feel which is your emotions and your emotions will determine your judgment and your judgment is where your decisions are so this is the component that's why i said that what informs you determines your form so it starts from your reasoning to your imaginations then to your emotions and to your judgment what informs you if you stay in a place where they are preaching lies you will develop a lying spirit naturally if you stay in a place where they keep preaching money 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 you will develop greed and covetousness to you it will be righteous because that's the information you have been receiving there are many people struggling with low self-esteem because they grew up in a family where someone kept whispering to them how unqualified and how unworthy they are someone kept telling them that you will not amount to anything now parents please be careful what you say in your anger be careful come on get out from there stupid boy be careful be careful what informs a man determines his form now the person is 21 years old and you are submitting his name for prayer request because he's now stupid stupidity raised to the power of 21 and guess who caused it you There are some husbands who never say anything good to their wife they are so egocentric they are so proud even to say sorry is a problem sorry i love you but let me talk to you let me tell you the truth that woman will become 
your words because God wired them to be sensitive more to words and why God created you as a man in the image of God is so that for goodness sake you speak like God God saw darkness but he said let there be light I wish I had time to really expound on this. What informs you is what determines your form. And then finally, number five, your mind is your reality. Your mind is your reality. Believe me, if you have never seen it in your mind, you will never get there, not even by mistake. There's nothing called coincidence in the kingdom. Everything that happens is a response to something that happened every action is the reaction to an initial action it's even a law in physics what's that uh, law of uh, newton's law that a body remains at rest until an external force so it has energy in it that's the reason why the external force can convert that energy from potential energy to kinetic energy if you've never seen yourself blessed beyond measure doing great things for the kingdom with resources you will never get there if you've never seen yourself give god a million naira you will never ever think that god is worthy of or of, of, of more value than a million and so the next time you get a million you are trying to hide it from god there are ladies that the reason why respectfully speaking the reason why you are 30 something you are not married is because you've not seen it in your mind so you need an information that will change what is here let me give you one isaiah 34 verse 16 it says seek out of the book of the law and read none shall fall to the ground none shall lack her mate for my mouth has spoken it and my spirit has gathered them did you see that sentence not one shall lack her mate excuse me what is mate husband not one shall lack her mate so even if your friend took your boyfriend from you you shall not lack your mate they only took him because it was not for you. Your mind is your reality. If you have in your mind a future of a blessed and a peaceful home, you will experience it. But if what you have in your mind is what you went through in your father's house, that your father was always punching your mother at the weekends, Even if you speak in tongues now, you are married as a boy. One day, your hand. It, with tongues, oh, with tongues, the hand will still go. Amen. Proverbs 23, 7 says, As a man thinks in his heart. So we need to start changing our thought pattern. Hear me, inside and outside. You need to begin the process that brings change to your mind if you want to see the full import of the blessings of god for you if you want to grow in your knowledge of god there has to be a mind shift here's what i said here your level of transformation is the sun through the following your level of transformation is the sun through the following please forgive me we are going to close by seven today okay just forgive me i need to finish everything today your level of transformation is discerned through the following this is how we will know that you have been transformed through the following exercises number one sorry how you relate with number one god we want to check your level of transformation it will be in how you relate with number one god how you relate with god can be an exercise that checks the level of your transformation how do you see god is god just a spirit somewhere is god like your the god of your forefathers made of stone and wood that every morning you pour libations to that's the reason why you don't want to live a holy life you think that with your seed and with your offering you can coerce god to take his eyes off your dubiousness you know there are people like that yeah it's because this for them god is like the god of their forefathers are you hearing me 
So they grew up seeing their father pouring libations, cutting yam. Even though the father is misbehaving, doing all kinds of things, they will cut yam, pour libations. Eh? Ifa, this one is for you. Shongo, this one is for you. And in his mind, he has appeased them. And then he goes back into his nonsense. So when that person has grown and claims to be a Christian, here's what he will do. He will steal money in government and take part of it and go to church and give an offering. And so in church, he looks like a very generous man to the things of God. But he's a thief and a robber. And those are the people who celebrate the most. Why will a pastor go and pray for a Yahoo boy? Yahoo boy? And then he will, he, will, he will convince them that how you get the money doesn't matter. As far as you do it, you, you bring the money to be used in the house of God. It is sanctified. Both of them are thieves. We do respect. Both of them are thieves. One has a master's degree. That's why he's anointing the other one. You know, in this kingdom, it's not everything you receive. It's not everything. How you relate with God, number one. When you pray, do you believe that he hears you? The Bible did not assure us that he will always answer. But the Bible says, this is the confidence we have in him. That whatever we ask him according to his will, he hears. He hears. So you don't know whether he's answering you, but you are sure of one thing that he hears. But if you don't know that, you become frustrated and give up. And times when you should have held on one prayer point till you saw a manifestation, you take your hands away because you are frustrated, thinking that God is not hearing you and you are bought a spiritual season. So in how you relate with God, your level of transformation can be discerned. Number two, how you relate with people how you relate with people whether they are family members whether they are other believers church members or whether they are people in the society how do you relate with people the difference between a religious man and a kingdom man is this a religious man sees christians as children of god only a kingdom man sees all men as children of god so a kingdom man does not care who God uses. As long as God uses somebody, it's okay. That is why God can use a donkey to restrain the madness of a prophet. That is why God can bring the lineage of the Savior through a prostitute and a half-caste. That is why God can go to a carpenter's shade and determine that the Savior of the world will be born from there. So if you have this perspective, if you have been transformed to understand that every man created was created in the image of God, God can use anybody. And to that extent, you will not condemn people. You will not write off people. You will see somebody who has been written off and say, this is the one that God will use. Come. That's the difference between Saul and David. When Saul saw a muscular young man, he said, come and join my army. But David took weak men. He took men who were relegated to the background. Men who were, who were despised in society. Men who were even owing debt. He became a commission for them. A shorty for them. I will pay you. And out of those men in the cave of Adilam, a mighty army was forged. An army where they were all giant slayers. Not the army of Saul. That even the giant Saul was running away from a giant. So how you relate with people will determine your level of transformation. How you relate with your family members. You are the lion of the tribe of the house. Anybody that annoys you, that house is on fire that day. No, it's true. We have the lion of the tribe of Judah. But in your own case, you are the lion of the tribe of the... Who touched my food? Who touched... And he's 29 years. He's still in his father's house. Who touched my food? He's 29 and he's wondering why those girls that he's talking to they are not looking at him he's 29 years how you relate to family members there are some people that because of how they have been hurt in the past I think you need to hold that thing very well they have 
they have developed a negative intelligence that family people are wicked people so if you ask them when was the last time you spoke with any of your relatives they don't know now whether or not you try to justify the reason for um, your orientation about family people the fact still remains that not all family people are wicked how do you treat your wife as a man do you treat her as the bible says that you should love her as christ love do you know what it means to love her as christ it's crazy as you are like this you are a young man 28 you are so selfish even to yourself you think you can love a woman with that character many people are waiting to get married before they change no you only you, you will only give, you will only express more when you get married do you hear me people don't really change in marriage say before i married her she was like this so where this one come from no this one was there that was the real person it was waiting for the platform of manifestation are you hearing what i'm telling you how you relate with people can determine your level of transformation there are women who no matter what you preach they have come to a conclusion and it's a mindset that as far as the family home front is concerned they are to contribute nothing it is a man that should do anything so guess who they are microphone receivers you receive everything when are you going to start your business i don't know are they wait for my girl no we are we can check your level of transformation when the young man comes and says, I want to marry you, he says, what, what can you offer me? Are you ready to take care of me? You are not transformed. I pity that young man. Young men, no, it's okay to look for security. But if that is her number one, run. I'm telling you, just run. See, if you don't run, you get married. There's no prayer you pray. Even if you go to the highest mountain, there's no prayer you pray that will change that person. They have that lady is naturally greedy and covetous. The next time you enter a supermarket, she'll pick everything waiting for the man to pay. Why can't we have competition on the on the on the table? Honey, let me pay. He said, No, no, my dear, I can take care of it. At least if the lady is saying thank you, it's okay. But there are some ladies who receive and they don't even say thank you. You are not even married to him, but you feel it's a right to collect from him. It's like you are the devil we are looking for. No, believe me. Believe me. All this while we have been looking for a devil with a tail and a horn. I think, I, I think we, we have a wrong picture. During Valentine, he brought you a Samsung. Say, why did you buy an iPhone? Is this what you bought for me? You even you the guy that bought the iPhone, you even try and but me I would have bought Bible. I'm telling you, pink Bible. You don't want I carry my blessings elsewhere. Are you hearing me tonight? How about the men? Okay. No, wait now, I'm coming for you. You know, you have been fighting from when you were small. You, you fight everybody. It's only oracle in your village you didn't fight. Even in your dream, you are fighting the oracle. So now you are looking at your wife as a wrestling mate. You know, you just see some men behave like children. Any small thing, if I slap you, eh? And start calling names anyhow. That man is a small boy. I'm telling you, you have, you have not been transformed. In your mind, she's still a second-class citizen. Shame on you. Shame on you. That you are revealing a false image of God. Shame on you, brother. Let me tell you. The true test of strength. Eh? Listen to me. Respectfully speaking to all the brothers. Listen to me. The true test of strength is not in conquest. It's in endurance. It's in patience. You see how slim I am like this, ba? good i may be the weakest though when it comes to contents but some of you muscular guys let's gather ourselves and enter a room and pray you will see who will last 
they will not know who is stronger. The true test of strength is in endurance. You must develop patience to a, to a fault. Your level of transformation can be determined or discerned through the following. Number one, how you relate with God. Number two, how you relate with people. Number three, how you relate with money and resources. There are some people that can't use their eye to see money. If I carry money like this and put it up, for, from now to the end of the service, that's what they'll be looking at. I hope there's, there's light outside. money resources when you when you see or hear money what comes to your mind is it to spend or to invest do you see money as a ticket to making more money or do you see money as the only reason for it should be to spend it this is how we know that you are getting transformed this is how we know that you are experiencing change the Bible says, honor the Lord with all your substance. All your substance. All. How many? All. Even your flat screen TV. Even your car. Honor God with everything. Then it says, and the first fruit of your increase. But when you got that job and they paid you one million. That's the one that you saw that is not good to give to God. That's your mindset. There are believers that love God genuinely. But believe me you, they can do anything for money. I mean anything. They don't mind sleeping around and anointing themselves with the sign of the cross. As long as they get that money. There are believers that can compromise to any length. They love God though, but when it comes to money, forget it. This is how we will determine or discern your level of transformation when we look at how you relate with God how you relate with people how you relate with money and resources another way is how you react to situations and challenges do you see challenges as a stepping stone for greatness do you see situations as an event for you to experience the mighty hand of God or do you like the people of the world confess and say my own is finished there are believers that once you hear a gunshot here now bah! till I in fact they will be praying for me to stop they expect that I should stop the message now and everybody will run the disciples were with Jesus in the boat and it was about to sink they came to him and said master do you not care that we are dying how can you be with the prince of life and die? How you react to situations, to challenges? Are you moved when bad things happen? There are believers who, who feel that the moment bad things are happening, God is angry with them. Haba. Job told his wife, have we expect, have we received good from God and shall we not also receive evil? I hope you know that that statement, though it was sincere, but it was not correct because Job spoke based on his revelation about God. That time there were no scriptures. In fact, it will interest you to know that the book of Job was the first book written in the Bible. It was written by Moses. So there was no scripture to give them a proper information about God. That this was not God punishing them. No, this was something that happened between God and Satan. And Satan was to attack him. But God will use this as a test for promotion. So a, a more informed believer will say this way, count it all joy, my brethren, when you go through trials. For the trying of your faith, walk at patience. He said, and let patience have its full work in you so that you will be perfect, complete, wanting nothing. How you react to situations. There are people they can be speaking in tongues now. The moment you slap them, yeah, Chris! they bring Adam from somewhere. Adam didn't die. They just covered him with blanket somewhere. He's still there. I go drop Bible now. Uh, your level of transformation will also be discerned by your concept about change. What do you know about change? 
one thing you must know is that change is constant. God is both a going God and a doing God. Finally, before we pray, the pathway to genuine transformation. Let me rush this and then we'll pray. The pathway to genuine transformation. Eight steps. Number one, identify the challenge. Identify the challenge. What is wrong around your life? Number two, get a personal revelation of the word of God concerning that thing. Number three, renew your mind. That's what the word of God will do with the help of the Holy Spirit. Change your thought pattern now that you have the revelation of the word concerning that thing. For instance, you have a challenge of poverty in your life. And then you stumble on the scripture that says, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that through his poverty you will become rich. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. You have a revelation of the word. Use that information you've gotten to renew your mind. Change your thought pattern that it is not God's will for me to be poor. God will not be held responsible that I die poor and go to heaven. Yes, I'll receive the crown of life, but I lived poor on earth. When there were riches and glory, I should have enjoyed on earth. And begin to change your mind. Renew your mind. Number four, make the right decisions. Decision number one, I will never be poor or suffer poverty like my father. And if I don't want to, I must have an investment mentality. The reason why your father was poor, even though he worked in the government, respectfully speaking, was because he didn't invest any money. A land that he would have bought in the 80s, cheap. And now it would have gone for billions. He refused to buy it. Now he's poor. His mates have properties. If you don't make the right decision to change what your father did, now that you are seeing arm robber salary, they are paying. You know what arm robber salary is? All of you working in NGO, is that not arm robber salary? I'm just joking. You know, that's the problem with our brothers in, in uh, international humanitarian organization because the salary is fat they feel that the money will keep coming so they spend any are getting you know, into all kinds of debt you enter every boutique you pick something somebody brings rapper to your house you are a man who you pick rapper join what are you doing with rapper if you don't make the right decisions you may confess that you will never be poor but guess where you will end up in the pit of poverty number four make right decisions so if it is finance, for instance, learn to save, learn to invest. If it is concerning marital settlement, study about marriage, put to practice the things you have heard. Some of you want to get married to the lady before you love her. No, start the love from the relationship. And let me tell you one of the ways to practice that love. If you love her, you will not sleep with her before you marry her. I know you didn't talk because I taught you, no problem. You know I love you. Number five, take quality decisions. You've made the right decisions. I think I missed it. Can I get my phone quickly? Quickly, quickly. I think I missed this point. Number, number one, I said to identify the challenge. Number two, I said what? Please say it again. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Take quality actions. Those decisions you have made, put them to practice. Let them translate to actions. Number six. Establish good habits. Establish good habits. Remember I told you that your action will become a habit. If you keep doing it, Jesus said if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed if you continue not if you try it once if you continue so you're coming here every sunday regardless is the habit for transformation number seven develop godly character your habit will definitely become a character and then number eight when you have developed a godly character you make your destiny a reality. So number one, identify the challenge. Number two, get a personal revelation of the word of God. Number three, renew your mind. Number four, 
make right decisions number five back up those decisions with quality actions number six invest in those actions till they become established good habits number seven develop a godly character with your good habits and then number eight your destiny becomes a reality god wants us to be transformed romans 8 verse 9 says those whom he predestined them he conform he, he foreknew to be conformed to the image of his son the goal is that we will look like christ at the end of the day that when people see you they will see the person of christ the character of christ the wisdom of christ you become the word made flesh on earth and there is no way you can fail in life there is no way you can fail in destiny when you allow god to take you through the journey of transformation you know the good thing about transformation as we round up tonight you never get to the best it only keeps getting better every day there is always an improvement on the last and we to continue like that till we see jesus face to face hallelujah Amen. are you blessed tonight yes, stand on your feet as we pray you make my life so beautiful and as you are you have made me better. there's nothing greater than this that's why i love you forever you made my Outside and outside, there's nothing, there's nothing greater than, than thee. That's why I love That's you. Why I what you have heard tonight open your mouth and thank him for what you have heard what a powerful word mind shifting life transforming word somebody needs to thank him for what you have heard today if I have heard what I am hearing now and before I will not be where I am but thank God that I'm hearing it today thank him for the word in Jesus name we pray the Bible says casting down imaginations bringing under subjection every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God I'd like you to pray in the next two minutes look into your mind the way to look into your mind is to look into your life because everything around you is a product of your thinking is there anything that can be traced to culture, to tradition, to the customs and the patterns of men that are anti-Christ, that you know that these things are against the scripture? It has become a stronghold in your mind. It has trapped you to a point where you, you love God, but you are doing things that the scripture does not support. I'd like you in the next two, three minutes to pull down that body of knowledge 
every stronghold around your mind that will not allow you live the very life of Christ and experience the fullness of God. I like you to command you to be dethroned. I like you to shake yourself free of that wrong and negative mindset. Lift your voice up. This is not a gentle prayer. This is warfare prayer. I like you to attack it with every energy inside of you. Raise your voice and pray. Sharabate kretegaba. Every wrong mindset, every body of knowledge that is not in line with God's will. Sharabate kretegaba. Every thought pattern that is anti-Christ, anti-scripture. I love God, but I find myself trapped in this mindset. I shake it off tonight. I dethrone every stubborn and wrong mindset. Every negative mindset is cast down tonight. You might have prayed. In Jesus' name, we pray. I want us to really pray with understanding. Listen to me. Many of us are held captive by wrong or negative mindset some of these mindset you adopted them from your parents so it's not your fault but you are a victim of it some of this mindset it was the influence of certain friends that were in your life in a particular season and now it is causing all kinds of limitations and restrictions around your life that is what we call a stronghold you need to deal with it if you deal with the strong man without dealing with the stronghold, you will still be in trouble. That's why I said I will contend with him that contends with you. And I will save your children. What will I save your children from? The wrong mindset. Are you ready to pray? Some of you have inherited mindset of poverty. That's why you always feel you will never have enough. And it has affected your giving. Instead of you to give, you are the one always receiving. Even thank you is a problem to give. You are a captive of a wrong mindset. So when I say pray this prayer and dethrone wrong mindset and negative thinking patterns, it's a warfare. It's a warfare. Because until you deal with it, you will still operate the same way. There are some ladies who were abused when they, when they were young. And because of that, they will never see good in any man. You need to deal with it. It's a stronghold that must be broken. Are you ready to pray now? There are people who have experienced heartbreak in relationships. They are now used to it. That if after two months there's no quarrel in the relationship, they will do something to ensure there's quarrel. You are a victim of a mindset. It's time to be free. In the next two minutes, lift your voice and confront those mentalities, those wrong and negative mindset headlong. No matter pray inside and outside. Pray. Online pray. Every negative mindset, every negative pattern operating in my life that I'm a victim of today by the wisdom of the word of God and by the power of the Holy Ghost, I confront you headlong. I dethrone you in my life. I break free. From that wrong mindset, from that wrong Mindset of greed, of covetousness. You love God, but you always want what people have. Break free from it. Every negative mindset 
that will force you to cheat on your spouse that will force you to betray the people you love break free from it break free from it shake off that mindset the mindset that makes you saucy makes you always insulting people no longer will you rule my life again mindset of anger of malice of hatred break free shake yourself off negative patterns of unforgiveness it's difficult to forgive people it's difficult to forget what people have done to you break free tonight shake yourself off you will not determine my destiny you will not rule over my life I break free from today I decide from today to walk in the freedom that I have in Christ Jesus in Jesus in we pray Acts chapter 20 verse 32 Paul said I commend you to the word of his grace that is able to build you up and give you an inheritance amongst them that are sanctified the word of his grace is able to build you up the word of God is God's number one tool for transformation I'd like you to cry in one minute before we close that father from today I submit to the ministry of your word the wisdom that comes from your word let it transform my life let it change my mindset let it shape my character let it determine my destiny. I refuse to be held bound by family traditions. I refuse to be held bound by the influence of wrong friends. I refuse to conform to my society. I receive the wisdom of your word for change, for genuine transformation. Cry to him. Be glorified, be glorified, hallelujah, be glorified. I receive the wisdom, the grace for transformation, for change by the word. In Jesus name we pray please lay your right hand on your head I want to pray for you every negative mindset that you inherited from family tradition ancestral limitations or peer influence wrong friends that you associated with every thinking pattern that is betraying your destiny and has kept you captive your hands are on your head i release the power of the anointing to break the yoke of that mindset let that stronghold be broken now in the name of jesus christ i bring you deliverance tonight by the power of the word of god come out of that bondage come out of that yoke and now I release the wisdom of God upon your minds let it transform you let it change you let it elevate you let it form in your life the right actions the right habits let it develop godly character in your life in the name of Jesus Christ lift your hands I'm still praying that from today as you receive the transformation that comes by the word of God I declare that no more will tribalism become a, 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 a sentiment by which you'll be denied access no more will men use tribalism to deny your access into certain places on no account of tribalism of nativity or language will men deny you from getting to your safe place 
everything that is yours will come to you speedily you'll be elevated at the right time to the right place to work with the right people in the name of Jesus Christ a new day has come for you in Jesus mighty name we pray and every spirit let me pray this for somebody here every spirit that has trailed your life because of some wrong thinking patterns that you have I command that spirit now that that stronghold has been broken I command that spirit be gone from their life tonight be gone from their life forever in Jesus mighty name we pray I declare that you are blessed I declare that you are prosperous you will walk in righteousness and holiness your life will project the image of Christ that your world will see and glorify God through you Jesus precious name we pray are we blessed tonight give the Lord a hand of praise hallelujah hallelujah thank you so much for your patience but we can't continue next week because there's another teaching for next week all right this sunday next sunday we're on a series i call intimacy series next sunday we are going to go deeper so i can't take anything from today to next sunday so i appreciate your patience inside outside and online and before we go i would like us to stand as we make the altar call now we've talked about transformation there are people here whose transformation must begin by saying yes to the Lord Jesus please everybody stand no movement anywhere if you are here and you practically know that you need Jesus in your life there is no way the Word of God can transform an unbeliever it must start from your spirit except a man be born again he cannot see it is only when you see that you are able to understand and be transformed but if you are not born again you cannot see you are here and you need Jesus desperately and unashamedly I'd like you to lift up your right hand or you are here you are a believer but because of certain attitudes and character around your life you have derailed you keep derailing again and again and you want to resurrender your life afresh lift up your right hand i will pray for you and if you are here you are struggling with some addictions some wrong habits and lifestyles nobody's judging you but you want to be free lift your right hand i want to pray for you inside and outside surrender to jesus today and let him begin the work of transformation if you are lifting your hand lift it up very well in fact let me add the fourth one if you know that if jesus comes this night you are not sure of heaven join them lift your hand there's such a thing as being sure let's start with that first then the transformation can continue it doesn't matter whether you are a worker you are a leader you are a deacon lift your right hand now if your right hand is lifted inside and outside please walk up to the front quickly i'll pray for you If I give God my life, please clap for them outside and inside. Keep coming. He will take take care, care of me. Keep clapping. They are coming. Celebrate Jesus for souls. He will never, never let me down. I will give God my life. stretch our hands towards them please make it fast if you are coming so that you meet up with the prayer God bless you as you come those of you in front while those of us in the congregation are praying for them with your hands stretched towards them those of you in front please put your right hand on your chest and I want you to repeat this prayer after me passionately with understanding and with the whole of your heart mean business because your life is about to change say after me Lord Jesus I can't hear you. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I repent of my sin. I receive you into my heart and my life as Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Keep your right hand on your chest. Father, I stretch my hands towards them. By the authority of your word, I declare that their sins are forgiven. I declare from today that they are born again. 
and i declare that from today by the spirit of god you will begin a walk of transformation in their lives take them from glory to glory break off their life stubborn habits stubborn mindsets negative thought patterns deliver them from addictions deliver them from pain for some of them heal them from the grief and the loss that they have experienced for years make their lives brand new jesus mighty name we pray amen amen and amen look at me those of you in front god bless you for making this honorable decision this is the best decision you have made god wants to begin a walk with you if you will just turn to your left somebody is waving his hand he would direct you to our counselors so you just follow that person waving his hand and our counselors will attend to you god bless you please guide them as they go no matter clap for souls if i give god my life he will take care of me sing it one more time he will never never let me Have you been blessed today? I want you to give the Lord a big hand of praise. Amen. Amen. Once again, thank you for your patience and your time. We are closing here. Next week, we'll continue on the Intimacy Series. And then um, the Sunday after that, we'll begin the seven Super Sundays. So make sure you get prepared. Make sure you are here the lord will bless us in jesus name um remember our project for the audio mixer that we want to buy we should be doing that by the end of this month uh, so those of you that need to still make contributions let them display the project account so that they can do that or you walk up to the public relations stand after the service and uh, you'll be giving the account details so be a part of what we are doing we trust god that by the end of this month we should have purchased it um, so that our sound quality can be improved here yeah. amen and amen are you blessed tonight we're going to share um, what do you call it now surely aha i was told that bishop's mom is around i think she's somewhere let's honor her and give her a big god bless you amen bishop's dedication for his son was today I guess that's why mommy has come. So if you want to see his mom, go and see him after the service. And um, um, want to honor a man of God who is with us, Pastor Dr. Baba Ali. I think that's the elder brother of him. The brother to Mrs. Herma. Is he here? God bless you, sir. Please give him a big God bless you. Let's honor him. Thank you, sir. All the way from Abuja, right? You're welcome. I've been hearing about you. I'm seeing you for the first time. God bless you. And Mr. Nathan's wife came today. Thank you so much. Let's give her a big God bless you. God bless you. I'm surprised that that baby was quiet. Amen. He's under the unction. Surely his goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Open your hands before you go. These hands will produce results. I declare that money meets money in your hands. Go forth and prosper. Serve the Lord with gladness. Jesus' precious name. See you here same time next week. God bless you.